Hello and welcome to today's episode of John Goes for a Ramble and Amble. <laughs> There's lots of background noises and we are just coming up on 9 a.m. on Wednesday morning. Happy hump day. I've got Patch with me. I'm not going to stand on his feet. What are we rambling about today? Today we're going to talk about manifestation, unblocking your manifestation, and frequency resonance and matching. I'll just flip you around and say hello. (laughs) Hello. So I'd like to share those two messages that came through in meditation for me today and or two themes that are totally interconnected so the first is manifestation and i feel like it's going to be easier for me to talk through a real life example for me before i then explain some more of the the detail about how this is this is possible so let us start with um on unblocking your your manifestation so certainly by i would say october last year so october 2023 i was um i really decided by that point i was going to leave my excuse me leave my corporate job in 26 years in software engineering and artificial intelligence it was a uh, a multi um, six-figure salary it was um, working with the latest artificial intelligence developing latest artificial intelligence with amazing teams that I'd created uh, with a primarily a presence in Europe but also across the world so that career was all fascinating everything but I knew that I needed on my mission to help raise the vibrations of billions of hearts I needed to leave that company because I felt too constrained in my in my role and in my work and then also you know speaking frankly the uh, you know the teams and the kind of constructs that I'd created around myself uh, previously um, no longer really matched my 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 desires my mission now it's not to say that they weren't helpful of course they're um they were massively helpful and what i found was that in my life uh and i still find it to this day is that everything i went through back then was all supporting me in this journey now so i don't want to be dismissive or you know to just throw away years of um you know working in a different career so the uh, the blockage I'd like to talk about is so I make the decision right and the decision is I'm going to leave my corporate job and I'm going to start my own business I didn't yet know fully how um, and I didn't know what the steps would be but I decided to start making changes and what's really fascinating is I was so hungry and so desperate and I think desperation is a really interesting (laughs) word that I just used um, because I felt trapped I felt constrained I felt that you know how am I going to get out of this difficult situation and I'm saying all this as I'm sharing like resharing vlogs that I'd been um, creating back at the time they were private back then and are now being made public because it's okay for me to talk about leaving <laughs> leaving a job I've already left um, so yeah just check the titles of the videos because it can be a little bit confusing but I always try and name the the date or I'll say it in the video about when that video was 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 filmed so I'm hungry maybe desperate um, and it, I described this desperation as a, as a relative like it's a relatively negative um, 
emotion, right? It's quite low vibration. And why was I desperate? Because I didn't, I didn't really understand how I would do it. Like, how would I go from such a um, such a well-paying job? And it was really interesting. My son recently called it um, a, a golden handcuff. Um, what a beautiful. <laughs> what a beautiful term. I don't think I'd ever heard it. I've heard of, heard of golden, um, what do you call it, like a golden handshake, some golden wristwatch, almost like something that you would get when you retire to thank you for your service, but not a golden handcuff. And that that was very true. That's that's how it, how it felt. And of course, you know, in that analogy, like how do you break free from a golden handcuff and the first thing is you say well actually what's more important the gold or the fact that they're handcuffs it doesn't really matter you know how how incredible they are those handcuffs you know if they're made of platinum or diamonds or whatever in your life if you still feel trapped and constrained they're still going to really annoy you <laughs> And so, yeah, I, I knew I needed to really break free from those handcuffs. And then knowing fine well that, you know, although lots of people make lots of great money out of not dissimilar work that I do now in my business, that it would be a journey to figure all that out, that it would be, um, it would force me to face some of those those negative feelings of lack and i feel that 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 um that word desperation you know is tightly coupled with my or fueled by my sense of lack and it's quite funny my body's just like reminding me how that feels just now and in my so let me just flip you around so you can see my expressions i mean like in my in my stomach and my solar plexus it's like this hungry feeling my body's like oh uh we've not eaten today I hope we're going to eat again soon and it was it was that feeling it was like oh how, how will i how will i survive with um you know feeding myself so yeah i think that was really simple also my family <laughs> not to forget them as the main wage earner i i knew that it was really hard to get through this so let's like freeze frame this, right? Let's just say you've got John who realizes he's in golden handcuffs. This version of John in October 2023 has decided it's a good idea to leave those, those handcuffs, to leave his corporate job. Um, but the feelings that John has are lack, and they are desperation, like struggling with these, trying to break off these these golden handcuffs and then not knowing what to do next. Like, what will I do when I'm free? And what do you think happens? So bear in mind, you know, I'm like, I'm John Binney. I'm, I'm spiritual and stuff, right? I'm doing daily meditations. I'm talking to my spirit guides each day. And I'm talking to them about these themes. And I know that if you look back, you know, my, my hi, it's John videos are like, you know, one, one purpose for them is a diary um, of, my, of my journey. You know, I, I always wanted to catalog and diarize my spiritual journey, um, both the music and then my daily meditation messages, as well as you know, although that's not specifically what I asked for, I know that the fact that I journal them each day, that I create them each day, that it creates this uh, journaling effect. So, <laughs> so I've got these low vibration feelings. I decided I'm going to break out of my, um, you know, this this, uh, this this handcuff. And then the next thing is I've got to figure out, okay, what um, what do I do next? Morning. <laughs> Come on, catch. Come, buddy. So, come on. So, what do I do? I 
and I, and I must thank my wife for this. So one thing that she she did that she really helped me with was she said, um, you know, why don't you start looking at getting some qualifications in you know in things that people will find easier to uh, to to connect with, um, such as reflexology, uh, meditation. I started with meditation. And it was actually the, the, the meditation course that really got me into um, being able to connect with people at, you know, where they're at. I'll come on to those, those frequency matches a bit later. So John's story is John goes off, you know, 2023 John goes off and does his meditation course and completes it, decides he's going to leave his corporate job, going to break free from those golden handcuffs. And then he's going to um, also study uh, reflexology that came that started a bit uh, a little bit later uh, just just a few weeks later and what happens to John <laughs> so um, first of all you know I was having conversations with my family I was figuring out what to do with my life <laughs> and um, my career and I didn't I don't really know so once in this analogy of breaking free from your um, golden handcuffs I didn't really know what things I John would like to do once uh, once I break free I mean the good news is that never ends but I didn't even know where to start and I didn't really know the journey of how to do, discover these. So the next step was like I was going to these training courses and I started to decide that meditation teaching I enjoy. Like I love especially the the aspects of just being really human you know having a noisy mind and finding it hard to to do meditation and to to put time aside to do it as well as the practices themselves and the experiences and, and helping people grow um, I really love and reflexology I love the in-person aspect and connecting with people's bodies a lot more and not just all metaphysical like it's a very grounded thing right so you in a session you get your client to like sit down or lie down and then you uh, rub their feet like it's really grounded right like. Um, so I knew I started to enjoy those things. But I remember I was saying, so eventually in January last year, I did, um, I did resign, but I said, oh, it was maybe a little bit like a, like a half resignation. I mean, it, it, it was a re resignation. I sent it by email and I said, by the end of December, 20, uh, 2024, wow, I'd still be there, um, <laughs> that I'm going to leave. Um, and my boss is like, oh, I'm really sad, uh, and they're really shocked that you're that that I decided to leave the industry as well. And then the the next aspect of that was, I felt I felt like it was a good decision at the time, and it did help give me focus and start to get me to think um, about finances, about my income, and the sorts of money I think I'd have to earn, and what sort of lifestyle I'd like. Because all these things are somewhat intertwined and it's not all about sacrifices right it's all about focus and what you want to focus on and what your mission is and what you want to do and now bearing in mind although the training courses had helped a lot and i'd actually um as we approached january i start 2024 i started to, started to uh, develop and started to run um my my first was it January or into February? I think it's January. My first higher self foundational training, and that was also like an exploration. Like, what's it going to be like when I, you know, create a training course and, and run it? Um, will people buy it? Will I enjoy the experience? And yeah, I really love it. <laughs> in fact, I would say it's up there with. It's in my top, you know, whatever five things I love to do. Um, so yeah, I really love doing that. So, uh, they were helpful. But I could see there was this like gap. And I was like, what's happening? Why can't I leave early? Do I really have to wait to the end of the year? 
and what was really funny was um, my guides kept showing me, now, now bearing in mind last summer, they'd said to me, oh John, um, you're a lost ship. And I'm like, oh my god, you know, what, is, what does this mean? And it's like, well, you've lost your way, you don't really know where you're going or what you're doing. Um, you're pushing really hard at things you don't really understand. And I was like, oh, this is all, you know, not just a lecture from my guides. This was a lecture from, mainly from me, and the reflections from them. So, this, this ship analogy continued. And what was really fascinating was, I'm just going to turn around it. Um, what was really fascinating was that the, uh, my, my, my ship analogy, the message was, John, you're preparing your ship. So my ship had gone back to harbor and it felt like it went back to harbor last, um, uh, about last August. And what I've been doing is like busy rebuilding myself, preparing myself, exploring the things that I enjoy and that I get satisfaction from because let's face it, when you start your own business, if you don't enjoy doing it, well what's the point? Like just go and be be unhappy doing things for other people. <laughs> you don't need to be unhappy doing things for yourself. Um, or you know just change it. And this went on for months. It must have gone on for like three months and it felt very intense. So I'm just going to pause you there and remind you about why I started this video uh, 16 minutes ago, was that I wanted to share what was blocking my manifestation. So if you think about it, as a recap, in October 2023, I was like, I have decided to leave my job. I'm now coming up in January, February, March, and my guys are saying, John, you... you like, it's almost like this holding pattern. It's like, hold, John, like you've made the decision. We hear you, everyone hears you. Like I was asking in meditation daily, like do I really need to keep going to the end of the, end of the year? Do I really need to um, stay in this corporate job that long? And my guides kept showing me this ship and honestly, I could draw a painting of it. It was so vivid. Quite a big ship, quite old. Um, remind me of a kind of like a merchant ship, uh, a few hundred years old, quite long, maybe like a hundred feet in, in length. Um, and all, constantly I was being shown myself uh, loading up, you know, I was loading up all these different um, uh, goods and, you know, these were like supplies for, for my journey. And I was also figuring out like where I was going to go, what I was going to do, I was doing repairs on my ship. So, yeah, well, maybe one day I'll figure out how to draw that or do some AI prototypes of it. And what was really fascinating was the, this journey, this, the key message was that I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready to manifest my, my, my dream life, my, my dream business. And I was like, oh, why, why is that? Like, what's, what is it that's going on? And um, so this funny thing was that I, I, I felt, I had this, this sense that there was work, there was work for me to do. Um, and the work for me to do was in part like inner work to face fears, to face um, some kind of logistical challenges I would have. And that also my frequency itself was perhaps um, not not great you know and when when you've got like a low when you've got like a low vibration when you're feeling you know in lack or desperate in any way then that's like a, it's definitely a time where you really need to think carefully about well am I really going to take this this leap or not um, so yeah the next the next thing for me was to really step into well, what am I going to do to um, to help prepare? Like, what are the things that I I'm prepared to do? Um, so, <laughs> I was, uh, a really really interesting time. Um, so, what I next needed to do 
Oh, I'm actually distracted by it's a big dog friends. Um, we just passed two very large dogs. That one was very cute. Um, so sorry, I'm rambling a little bit as I'm ambling. The the message I started to realize was inside of me. I needed to break free from this lack mentality. So imagine you got your golden handcuffs financially, you're about to release them. If you feel in lack before, and just my right ear started to really ring loudly, if you feel in lack before you break free from these golden handcuffs, how are you going to feel after you break free? You're going to feel the same or more, right? Like it. Your problems don't go away just because you've said, hey, I've decided, John has decided he wants his dream life. No, in actual fact, what could happen is easily is that things just get a lot worse for you. And how that would have manifested for me was I would have started working crazy hours as soon as I left because that was a pattern that I developed whenever I felt in lack, I would work more and that I tightly couple my um, my self-love and self-worth and my productivity all together and that I would say to myself you know a productive John is a John that loves himself and you know whenever John feels in lack John just does more work and then the more work he does the more um, money he brings in for him himself and his family that, that is like a recipe for disaster. I don't know that I would have lasted more than two months um, after leaving my, my job. So I did leave. Um, the end of April, I left the office. And then I was on a thing called garden leave. Um, and maybe I'm skipping out the, the part. One of the cool parts was that I had asked, um, I'd asked my manager if it's possible for me to get um, redundancy and you know, although it wasn't a thing that was going on at the time in, in the company they uh, and they didn't really know how to do it I said well you can just contact HR and then you can ask them and then they can tell you whether it's going to be possible and that's that's exactly what happened so that was a really important step and it was like taking action you know when you, when you think about it first of all so I'm just dealing with Pat he's easy struggling a bit with what dogs do um, if you think about it from a manifestation perspective what I was saying was look I know I have these golden handcuffs I know you paid me lots of money to remain in the job that frankly you know I'm ready to leave um, however if you um, if you want me to leave earlier then I can do this. Sorry, <laughs> this is proving more difficult than I expected. Um, yeah, I can leave earlier. However, you need to pay me to leave. And it, it's so funny, right? Like it's <laughs> it's okay, Pat. Um, so imagine this: you're in the golden handcuffs, and you're saying, "If I just break free from them earlier than I expected." I will counter, you know, I, I will fill my fears of abundance, sorry, I will, opposite, I'll fill my fears of lack with love and abundance. And that's exactly what I did, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, I got redundancy, so I got uh, a payout, I, I left the company early, and so I was out, instead of leaving in December um, 2024, which wouldn't have happened yet, I left um, in... I uh, left the office at the end of April, and then, and then 30th of May I left the company. And it's just started to rain. So all this to say that the next thing I needed to do was really face that, that feeling of fear and lack and um, you know, not burn myself out. And so one of the things I did when I first left my, my job was I spent I went on a little you, you might remember me talking about things like a world tour and I feel like that world tour started and never ends um, but the first thing it is I went back to 
places where I grew up. I went camping in the camper van and I took time out so I wasn't working. I did a little bit of work but I was really on a on a quest to find myself and what I found on that vision quest was the version of me before I entered this lack mindset and it was really young like it was like about three to four years old I felt in abundance um, and then you know once you know you have a problem like if you're addicted to lack hi I'm John Binney I'm addicted to lack I'm a lackaholic um, <laughs> not to laugh at addictions but uh, once you treat it like an addiction you can start to tackle it right and I can do a whole separate video on how to to tackle lack mentality but what I started to see immediately in my life was that things just started to shift really fast and they continue to shift really fast and it's all because as I unblock myself as I face these fears as I tackle my lack of abundance my frequency rises and this means that the things that I attract into my life so the things that I project out are higher frequency. You know, so instead of just saying, I want to earn the same amount of money or more in my corporate job, like that's fascinating, right? You know, everyone gets to choose, you know, go knock yourself out. But a higher frequency th than that is, well, I want to help myself um, on my mission, empower myself and help others and help, you know, balance darkness and light in this, this whole planet. And I feel that's a service to others is a, is a higher frequency. And so what happens to me, you know, I invite into my life these, these things at a, at a higher frequency. Um, clients that want to be, you know, both receive that and also help partner with me, collaborate with me, whatever it is that they do on their journey to, to, to help others. Not just to give me some money so that I can go and move on to the next client. And so it goes on, and I feel that this is true for me, right? That the more and more I raise my vibration first, the, the, the knock-on effect it has in both what I'm able to, um, what I decide that I want to ask for in my life, and so the goals that I set, the mission that I want, the things that I want to do, and then of course, it's not just about those decisions, it's about the feeling. So if I feel really good about these, then I'm going to attract these into my life. Because it's like this resonance frequency match. And so yeah, to recap, John's updated laws of manifestation, the secrets, the hidden secrets of manifestation. Um, would, the first one would be about your feelings and saying, you know, well, how do you... How do you get yourself in a position where you feel like you have happy, high vibration feelings? And then secondly, um, with those happy, high vibration feelings, figure out the, the goals, the mission, the top three bullet points you'd like to achieve in your life. And then once you've done that, go out and take action and attract in the people at that frequency. Maintain that feeling. It's, that high vibration feeling as long as 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 long as you can. Anyway, we're we're back home and I'll speak soon. Hope this helps. Sending love.